put of that and realize that, hey, you know, there's something else going on here. So. That was a great response. Awesome. And if I could just get a response for the MH370 question from AKA. Wait, about three MH370? AKA, if it's okay, why don't you go ahead and add on to whatever Jason just said based on the same question, like broadly speaking, okay. do, do you think that what's going on supersedes the, uh, our understanding of science or re, I guess reality, even in that sense? And then we'll, we'll circle back to um, UFO Mean Girls question. Okay. Well, the first thing I want to do is just thank for Jason for, for, uh, for coming forward and, and disclosing this through you, you went through the full, um, uh, d process through, was it, was it uh, ICIG or, or DOD IG or elsewhere? I went first through the congressional, uh, whistleblower program under the NDAA of 2002, 22. Okay. I was then okay. told by, uh, some of my, uh, what I call friends now in Congress, they asked me to go to Arrow uh, since they just newly stood up. So I got to meet Sean Kirkpatrick um, and interviewed with him. And again, the, that was all classified, the, the conversation I had with him. So I don't want to get too much detail on that, but I did go there. Uh, again, you know, underneath the veil of the NDAA. And then I was asked to go see the ICIG. So I followed all the same process. The only thing that was different between me and David Grush uh, whom I, I greatly respect for what he did. And um, anyway, but uh, is that when we were doing the ICIG, um, I, I was not under a lot of duress like David was. Um, I know he suffered a lot of different threats, but uh, for me, you know, the most I ever got was, you know, some suspicious uh, activity that kind of led me to believe that perhaps I was being monitored or watched, but nobody ever kind of bodily threatened me or, and things like this that David had had happened. Not yet. <laughs> I hope not. I, I'd like to think that I know the people in the program. I know that they're still actively in the program and they know me. They know I'm not a bad guy. I'm, I'm just trying to get to a better place in all of this. That's why I came forward. Um, and Hearts in the chat for Jason real quick. I I'm on the same page. doesn't matter what your intent is. Some forces, yeah, might harass you. <laughs> well, I'd have to say that I guess just to tell you a little bit about my background of coming forward as well, it's just that I think a lot of people found it. My my rendition was kind of refreshing, but just that the reason that they found it refreshing was because I'm not adversarial. I understand the people in the program, and I know why they're doing certain things, um, and I also get why you know there needs to be a little bit better transparency on their part but it's going to be difficult because it, they've since the beginning you know you got to understand this was the mccarthy era that started this everybody was calling each other russians and commies to their neighbors and everybody you know didn't have a, a trust level that was really doable uh to be calling each other neighbors even at that time so yeah there was a lot of things and decisions that were made early on in the program that kind of, you know, if you think about it, the program people are, are, are kind of in a bubble and uh, that culture is still kind of alive. And so the, that, that, that did cause some of the decisions that they, they, uh, they made uh, maybe need to be updated now because they, they're, they've been around since the beginning, you know? Uh, and yeah. Well, I just, I'm going to reemphasize real quick. Thanks, Rob, for letting me co-host. But this is a quick reminder of this. I, I really do think this is the biggest story in human history. And so I'm, I'm not trying to blow any smoke up your ass. I don't even know who you are. I don't know who AK is or Steve. But so are you the guy if, that if my the... priors serve me correctly, uh, I honestly on. think you're going to go down in history. Like just coming out and doing what you're doing right now, even though you're like three degrees removed, like, you're a hero, in my opinion, if you are who you say you are. So, Jason, what was the earliest your... year the program started? Like, how far back does the program start? And again, we've had now like four or five IC people come in here to basically vouch for each other and this story, which again, I understand. Yeah. Um, but my question with why has there been so much silence with the MH370 stuff 
if when that video resurfaced, there hasn't been an official statement by anybody one way or another, um, when, you know, the it's we're here for disclosure and transparency. But um, so that, and again, what is the earliest date, Jason, um, that you know of for the program in terms of when it might have started and under what administration or under what um, even Air Force, was it under Vandenberg, uh, Twining? Like, do you know when it started and what the organization handled that? Um, yeah, I, I have seen some originating documents that state 1954 was like the official paperwork date but i'm sure there was other things that happened before then um, whether they're documented or not i do not know i was not even born back then <laughs> uh, but you're so you're talking eisenhower truman era kind of uh, time frame uh, i do know that uh, holloman was was also part of all that time frame as well that that is a, a place of some of the activity that uh, yeah that's that's definitely a place that you could hang your hat on and do some research on. Um, so getting back to the MH, what did you say, the uh, MH370 or that was also something you wanted to address? Well, uh, Jason, I've got a quick question for you. Um, were you in- Yeah, no, what, so like people have been relatively quiet. About- hey, real quick, they let's- came in full force, so I'm just wondering why why is everyone so quiet about can that we, video one way or another? Can we try to, let's, I don't know if he can hear me, but I want to try and center uh, both AKA and Jason Sands, if that's okay. I don't know, Rob might disagree. And can we get around to the hand? Yeah, I mean, I yeah, think UFO, that. Was that like... UFO Mean Girls was up, but. Well, just, yeah, just let him yeah. answer the question real quick, though. Yeah, go, yeah, let's, yeah, let's let him get to the question. But yeah. can you hear Jason? UFO Mean Girls? It doesn't I, I was. Yeah. Just, I uh, okay. Drop out real quick, come back, and then do um, you want to answer his question? All right. So we heard, is this the guy from the James Fox documentary? Is this who this? Yes. Is that who you are, Jason? Okay, it's, perfect. I'm exactly who that is. Yes. Thanks. So you're, just to be clear, you're the guy that Steve has been talking about, right? Yes, Steve and I met back in 2021. Uh, he, he is correct in that it was. Oh, yes, yeah, it's been dead silent. We suited to answer this, but you know, again, there you guys seem, seem to come out in full force today for this. But with the MH370 stuff, like it's just been no, you know, it's been dead silent one way or another. And if you've been part of this community, you know, you've noticed that it's kind of been very divisive for a lot of people. I'm just wondering. What it was like on your side and why you know where do you stand and what why has there been no no statement on it from anybody jason you got anything on that okay yeah i do um I, being part of the ic community um and still part of it hang on a second i got somebody at the door but um yeah um it's been kind of, you, should we have AKA go and then you yeah, let him respond, respond while, while I answer this. AKA, what are your priors on MH370? Uh, Am I being put up live in space? Yeah, I will just say the vi- uh, I don't. I, uh, let's. Just, I'll just do this. This is personal. Once again, this is my own uh, analysis of of the video footage. Is absolutely been doctored up. As much work has been trying to, uh, you know, um, argue against that the that that video footage has is is <clears throat> basically uh, untouched and completely native. I I don't agree with that at all. That's all I really have to say about it. Cool. No, that is um, that is a great answer. All right. Yeah, thank I'm you. back. But um, I agree. Uh, we've had a lot of I, my Intel folks that I know and I call friends and um, they're all very well uh, educated. They say the same thing that, you know, this is something that's kind of on the fence of, well, the angles look good. You know, the clouds uh, are hard to replicate from multiple angles as was in the videos you guys have heard all the arguments 
but uh, there's always, you know, a, a negative side to it to where, you know, somebody that just really wants to spend that, that amount of time and the current technologies, it's quite possible that it is a hoax. Do you have any suspicions, either of you, uh, James or AKA, that that hoax uh, wasn't just like a, someone in the public, but someone, or sorry, basically, do you have any suspicions that it was uh, that hoax came from inside the government? I doubt it because the go- <laughs> you guys are giving the government too much credit as far as their, their, their visual effects skills. <laughs> Yeah, I, I would doubt that they would spend as, the, the amount of resources would have been quite huge to, to do something silly like that when really what was all that was needed was for us as a nation to respond to help in the search and rescue operation. Why would they concoct a, a governmental level U, UFO hoax? Uh, well, and years after the search even concluded, right? Sorry, it's a silly question. It just it, that was a big story. Yeah, but it, it's kind of irrelevant. Yeah, in my mind, it doesn't make sense that they the government would have hoaxed it. It would have been somebody else hoaxing it, if if anybody else. But it, right, you know. Thank you, guys. Um, I think we need to go to David next.